Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about the letters to Timothy and Titus by Robert Yarbrough in the Pillar New Testament Commentary Series. Before I do that, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. Also, I'd appreciate it if you would consider clicking the thumbs up button on my videos as that really helps my efforts on YouTube. Like I said, I'm going to talk about the letters to Timothy and Titus in the Pillar series. I'm doing this at the request of a viewer, a YouTube viewer, so I'm happy to do that. Um, I'm going to share with you some academic reviews for the volume, and I'm also going to do some contrast, some compare and some contrast with William, William Mounts' volume in the, on the pastoral epistles in the WBC series, because over the last 15 to 20 years, uh, many have considered this to be the best commentary on these three New Testament letters. So if you're not familiar with the terminology, the pastoral epistles uh, does refer to the letters of First and Second Timothy and Titus. They're called pastoral epistles because of the content. Um, they deal with mostly pastoral concerns and also the recipients. they are letters from Paul that were written to two individuals, Timothy and Titus, as opposed to a church like the Church of Ephesus or the Church at Galatia. I do consider the Pillar series to be one of the top 10 available commentary series today. I have a page that lists the top 50. I'll put the link down below in the description box if you're interested in seeing it after the video is over. Robert Yarborough published this commentary in 2018. It is 604 pages in length. When this commentary came out, Dr. Yarborough was kind enough to do a question and answer with me for my website on this volume. I'll also put that link in the description box. So if you would like to read more about this commentary in Dr. Yarborough's own words, feel free to follow that link. And I just, I really appreciate his kindness and giving me his time and answering my questions about that commentary. So please check that out. Uh, comment down below too, what pillar New Testament commentaries have you used and uh, what did you think of them? So more about Yar Robert Yarbrough before we get into the commentary itself. He is a professor of New Testament at Covenant Theological Seminary. He also taught at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School for 15 years, and he's taught some other places as well. He is a teaching elder in the PCA, the Presbyterian Church of America. Theologically, he is reformed. The other book that he is well known for, I should say the other commentary that he is well known for, is the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John volume in the BECNT series, the Baker Exegetical Commentary on the New Testament series. And that one is one of the best reviewed commentaries on the letters of John. And that led to many people really looking forward to his commentary on the pastoral epistles. And uh, when that came out a few years ago, um, they, they were not disappointed. So a couple of issues that people want to know about before using and purchasing a commentary on the pastoral epistles is uh, authorship. Yarbrough holds to Pauline authorship. He believes that Paul wrote First and Second Timothy and Titus. He uses the 2011 NIV a text as his base English text. Um, something interesting to note is on the back of, I think this is on the back of all pillar commentaries. It says that the base English text is today's new international version, the TNIV. Um, but just to be clear, Yarbrough uses the 2011 NIV as his base text. And he also brings other English translations into the discussion as the, as, as just the discussion warrants it. I would describe it as a verse by verse exegetical commentary. Um, it is a mid-level commentary. The, uh, the target audience is pastors, although others would benefit as well. I would call it an exegetical commentary, but there's a lot of theological insight. And one of the strengths of this commentary is Ra Yarbrough's reflections on pastoral concerns, which makes sense given that these are the pastoral epistles, um, but it's well-reviewed for, for that purpose. Another thing people want to know is the author's approach to um, the passages that discuss women and their role in the church. Um, and that can be kind of a controversial issue. So, um, and I'm also going to show you at the same time um, one of the tables that Yarbrough provides uh, because it's on this topic. So I'll just mention his view on that and show you one of these tables. So here, the, the top of the left-hand page here is um, table nine. There's 31 different tables in this commentary and the reviews, the academic reviews that I'll, that I'll cite in just a moment. Um, really liked these tables, uh, just a creative way for Yarbrough to organize information in various passages. And so this is, this is an example of one of those tables. The title of this is Three Main Positions Towards Scripture and 
women. So he discusses it in that section, but I'm not going to read it for you on the video. I'm just going to summarize it. So Yarborough talks about three different approaches. The first one he calls the critical feminist approach to these passages. The second is the evangelical feminist approach. And the third is what he calls the evangelical traditionalist approach. And that's the one that he takes. In, in Yarborough's own words, he is an evangelical traditionalist in relation to these passage, in relation to these passages that discuss women um, and church roles. Now, theologically, um, some might uh, some might understand the terms complementarian and egalitarian. So, uh, just very briefly, if you're not familiar with that discussion, complementarian is the view that men and women are equal in value but that certain roles in the church are just for men. And that's contrasted with egalitarian, which is the view that men and women are equal in value and that every role in the church is open to men or women. So Yarbrough is complementarian. He's complementarian. So he believes that men and women are created equal by God, but there's certain roles in the church that are reserved for men. All right, so a couple of academic reviews, and then I'll do a little bit of contrast with Mounts's volume. The Bulletin for Biblical Research in these, uh, regarding the section um, um, on 1 Timothy 2 and 3, the reviewer says this, Yarborough's critical and interpretive position on these matters will elicit strong reactions from adherents on the other side of the interpretive continuum. However, there is much value in this commentary, and even those who disagree with his viewpoints should still be willing to give him a fair hearing. So, I thought that was a, a fair assessment of the of the Yarborough's um, of applying Yarborough's views to to read him and consider what he is saying. I'll say this again, that I'm doing this video as I got a request to, to do a video on this particular volume. And it came out in 2018. And um, I don't often do videos on brand new releases. I'll, I will show new releases, but I won't do a full review on them because the academic reviews just aren't out yet. It can take a year or two to get a get a few academic reviews on a volume just because they're not they're not published that academic journals aren't published that often. But I did find some academic reviews on this volume that have come out in the last few years, and it has caused me to to uh, reorganize the commentary, the, the recommendations I make on the pastoral epistles on my website. So I, I, I redid that in recent days, and so I'll put a link down below if you want to see um, how I moved Yarbrough up the rankings based on these ac ac these academic reviews that I'm sharing with you. So the first one was from the Bulletin of Biblical Research. The second one was is from the Presbyterian. Yarbrough's concern to underscore the pastoral tender of the pastoral epistles heads the introduction and consequently sets the tone in the entire commentary for both the academic for sorry. It sets the tone in the entire commentary for both the audience and himself as the author. And this is what the reviewer says is the crown jewel of this commentary. It's, again, it's Yarborough's concern to underscore the pastoral tenor of the pastoral epistles. That, according to the reviewer in the Presbyterian, is the crown jewel of this commentary volume. And the reviewer concludes, this volume is worth every penny of the price tag. It presents a ready feast for anyone hungry to understand God's word. Now, let's do some comparison with the William Mounts volume. And again, I'm comparing it with this volume because in the last 15 or 20 years, um, many people would say that this is the best reviewed volume on the pastoral epistles. So Mounts wrote this volume in the year two, or was published in the year 2000. He took 13 years to write this volume. It's 641 pages in length, um, published in the year 2000. And so what would that make it? He started it in 1987. All right, so let's do some comparison. First, some similarities. Yarbrough defends Pauline authorship. Mounts defends Pauline authorship. Yarbrough is complementarian in relation to the passages that discuss women and the church roles, and Mounts is as well. Both are complementarian. A couple of the differences. There's, there's, 
Mounts's Greek expertise is a main part of this commentary. His expertise in Greek really shines through with word studies and exegesis and some of just, just how the WBC series is, uh, volumes are organized internally just lends itself to his strength as an expertise in Greek. Now, I would also say that Yarborough is an expert in Greek, um, but Mounts, if you didn't know, Mounts has a lot of materials. He's come out with a lot of books on on learning Greek and Greek reference materials and, and all sorts of things like that. So that's what I mean by his expertise. Um in Greek. Yarborough, uh, though, is also a Greek scholar and, um, he, but the, but really based on the reviews, what the, the real contribution here is in the, is how he uses exegesis to move toward theological insight and pastoral concern. Um, there's not as much application and reflection in the Mounts volume as there is in the Yarborough volume. Uh, another difference now that I think about it is that if you're interested in the biblical scholarship in relation to these three New Testament books, Yarbrough's volume is going to be 18 years newer than, than Mounts's volumes. Now, ideally, I know you probably expect me to say this, but ideally both of having both of these together is like the perfect world. Uh, if you're going to be teaching or preaching through, uh, Timothy, first and second Timothy and, and Titus, um, because you're going to get a lot of theology and, and, um, pastoral concern that's built on the exegesis in this volume. And you're going to do a deep dive on exegesis and the Greek in this volume. So, you know, maybe just both of them together would be a good re recommendation. So, um, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. Please, uh, check out the links below and, um, thank you for watching. Thank you for visiting bestbiblecommentaries.com.